Hello and welcome everybody to this here video. It is quite a special one because we are presented today with the Rover SD1 VAS. Originally produced between 1979 and 1980, this was the halo model of all of the Rover 800s at the time, the Series 1. So of course you have the optional extras which will go in, well the little extras should I say, that came with this car that the 3500 did not come with. So I thought I'd take a quick look and we'll take a quick tour around her more of this and you want to see more of Tim's cars big shout out to him at crap car collective for letting me come and have a quick look around if you want to see more of this sort of content please subscribe to the channel and let me know what your favorite little feature was below so this of course is one of the earliest known VAS's on the road with only 10 being left and one being in someone's garage you know who you are so obviously they came in quite a special paint scheme so you're Triton green you had another metallic blue you had this wonderful platinum Midas gold. And one of the craziest, most weird options on this car is the, the wonderful wheels, which are obviously painted in matching gold. I just think it's incredibly weird. I actually didn't quite like it. I was, because you're sort of um, a bit Subaru'd by gold wheels, but with this car, it looks incredibly classy. And obviously this was designed to look like a Ferrari Daytona with its wonderful wrap around indicators. Obviously with this being a uh, the series one, You've got the inset headlights, and with this being a V8S, which I don't know what the S stands for, by the way, we have these wonderful little um, winds, these um, little headlamp wash wipe system. I can imagine these little bits being quite hard to get hold of, obviously with it being bespoke to this car. Obviously the original Series 1, the earlier models, came with a metal emblem, which I'll include a picture of. This, of course, has got the 3D emblem, which looks great, similar to the P6. Let's have a quick look. So you've got obviously the three and a half litre Rover V8. Originally, of course, they bought the rights to this design off of Buick. You have the twin SU carbs at the top, dumping fuel into the big monster. This car obviously will happily get to 123 miles an hour. That is its maximum speed. So this car was, of course, it's, it's not supposed to be a sport as in an S or a speed. It's a V8S, I assume, by its luxury. Of course, with it being a V8S as well. You, the, one of the st some of the standout features of course as we've mentioned the gold wheels the interesting paint scheme such as this Midas platinum gold and Triton or Triton green as I've mentioned you also have these wonderful chrome handles which feel incredible this is one of the things with early 70s late 70s cars they really sort of got into the got into their own in terms of quality because that feels amazing of course with this being a survivor and the VAS being one one let just over one year of production this is a very special car so i just want to obviously we had a bit of a seat there in the wonderful interior but we'll have a quick look around of course this is a hatch hatchback fastback design which they obviously carried over to the rover 800 but that model wasn't launched until i believe 1988 or 1987 so you've got a very large boot this latch on here is very reassuring as well so here we go I originally thought with the SD1 when I saw it when I was a kid, I thought the whole thing lifted up. You just have all this and of course, this is a weird, weird um, thing about these cars. They obviously have this, this three-piece system so you can sort of move stuff about. And of course, under there, you've got that tri that um, wonderful platinum Midas gold wheel. This car, of course, is a very special car with it being a five-speed manual. Most of these VASs came in a three-speed automatic, which was a GM gearbox, I believe. This car originated from the Isle of Man, originally dealt to, dealt with by these guys, Isle of Man dealership. It was also a demonstrator car, so this was the car that you, you got your first impressions before you ordered your VAS, and I think it makes a very lasting impression. So we come and have a look at these wonderful badges that, this is the thing I love about 70s to 80s Rover, these stretched, wonderful font, and of course you've got your exhaust jack. I stuck my hand in many an exhaust, of course, these rear lights were designed the way they are because when dirt flicks up over the back, also mentionable, these original Rover mud flaps, period correct because of the logo as well. So when you get a bit dirty, a bit dusty on the back, you've got the rib design. So the headlights are never completely covered. Of course, if you just splattered something all over them from the rear, they would be completely covered. So this run of this chrome work all around, you can see this is slightly raised up from the paintwork. Obviously, it acts as sort of like a guttering system. You can also mount things on it. This, of course, the, the Rover SD1, as much as people um, make bad about them, 
it was car of the year in 1977 for its revolutionary design it was a complete departure from the p6 when it was announced just that swooping look in the general practicality of course underneath they're not particularly advanced not compared to the p6 at the time but of course look at the, the very very nice styling of this thing but this is another thing i didn't notice so on these cars they have this rib effect here of course i understand that's maybe to channel water or air etc but on the series 2 cars they just have the rover logo i kind of prefer that on the series 2. so let's move on to the interior also you have the v8 badging as well which i think is monstrous you have the black sill sort of similar to a cowley 75 but obviously nothing alike that car so let's have a look inside the beast so the SD1, I've, I've no, as I've noticed, has a really, really low roof line, so the hair test doesn't really apply here because you're touching the roof. So if I get one of these, I need to make sure I don't have hair. This this interior is just in, is modular, of course. These were designed for both the US and European market, and as well, uh, and of course, other right-hand drive markets, like obviously ours. So this could be moved over to there. This could be moved over to there. This vent would obviously go there because it's this essentially behind there is exactly the same. And I'll show you a close up of that shortly. One of the most interesting things, of course, with this being a VAS is it has aircon, which I neglected to mention at the start, which is really, really quite odd for an early SD1. But this, this is quite curious because obviously they have, they've tried to put as many words as possible. And these, this is incredibly tactile, all of this stuff. So you've got your five speed manual. The shift on this is, it's very, you feel it, feel a bit unsure, but that action there, the bot, it, it, it always, it is, it doesn't want to go to the middle, it is going to the middle. Of course, we've got these little details like this, which Jeremy Clarkson mentioned was made by Futurologist. Of course, they didn't predict the smartphone, so the smartphone does not fit. But I bet you, of course, a Motorola Razr would fit in there, or an iPhone 4 or 4S, or a 3G or 3GS, or the original iPhone. Another thing I did not know about this car is you've got another glove box under here. And of course in here, Tim has appropriately placed the service passport, which of course is a completely blank one, so you'll need to get that filled in, but I believe he's got a full service passport for this car. That is brilliant. Of course, he's got his cassettes in here as well, but that is another weird thing. Can you imagine if you were driving along in this thing and then all of a sudden your glove box mechanism failed and it slams into your knees? That would just be really, really, really quite inconvenient. So you've got your other glove box here interesting stuff quite big you can see another thing you can see with the um, the ducting for the AC and stuff in there quite interesting stuff there stuff like this as well this slightly chrome plastic there on there with it. it's got the is that a light that looks like a light so you've got a, a light there another curious thing about these cars on the series ones they don't have the band the metal band here with the rover logo on it they well the rover the right in the big rover they just have this this wonderful soft touch thing where you obviously your your horn is obviously on here on these not here as I would imagine this stitched leather steering wheel obviously in the appropriate brown color you've got these big 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 and I mean big um watch sun visors just incredible that that obstructs half you that obstructs literally half of the windscreen's view I'll show you a shot of that. That is just something else. You even have these, which is, it, this is just a, a crazy detail for me. Of course, you've got your dash here. It's the continuity and the, the thought put into these. You've got your dash here, and then you've got your cigarette, um, where you where you put your, your stuff, your, your ash, etc. And that is obviously chrome metal as well, which looks great. Another thing about the Series 2 versus the Series 1, these cars actually had totally different dials. So, of course, you've got your... Um, with the series two it had the dials that go like this i described and this has the full sort of more traditional tachometer speedo fuel and you get a lot of information that is a lot of information to take in whereas most newer cars seem to spoon feed you and just tell you your revs and and your speed and your mileage this thing tells you your fuel your battery voltage your oil your temperature it tells you everything you need to really know and it's not in the periphery like the cx another curious thing on the older the older series ones the automatics they just have a rover logo there instead of the the speed the gate map of the gearbox you've got your clock which is also incre incredibly loud i'll tell you all about that as well that's just one of the more interesting quirks of this car you've got this this really really big storage area 
And one of Tim has kindly given us this to have a look at. So you have your this just screams extra for a car. This is really really special. You've got instead of your flimsy, you know, your your paper, you've got your hard backed by your hard backed um, owner's manual with lovely gold embossed Rover logo and Rover VAS lettering. So of course this is like this is sort of nighttime reading, but. These 70s photographs look really, really cool, by the way. Yeah, that is special. That's what makes the VAS special, I, I believe, is these little details, and obviously it's more of a luxury model than, obviously, the Vitesse that came later, or the SE 3500, etc. So we will move on to the rear. Also, we have original mats, which looks great, and you've got this wonderful felt material on the, on the doors, which is just incredibly curious. So let's have a look at the rear of the car as you know of course the the back of this car swoops so my lovely hair is touching the roof so hair test it doesn't pass but i think one of the main things about this car is i would really love to be in the rear of it because you've got little touches like the the ashtray like there's an ashtray here most modern cars don't really think that much about the rear passengers but this is same it's not plastic it's not second class it's the same as the front and you also have electric windows on the rear as well which is just something else oh no they're here but yeah we don't have we don't have power at the minute you've got this little center armrest or cubby where you can put your things and the weird thing about this is how it folds so obviously you could see here i was struggling with it like that it folds it sort of folds upwards i believe yeah there you go look it folds upwards interesting it's like this car was just designed just yeah, it's designed, it's designed in a way that sometimes it, it appears it's form over function, but the rear of this car and the, this, the, the length of the, the leg space and the length, especially in that middle section, of course, this is three across. And these, these as well, these wonderful, look at that. The, this is chromed, it's heavy. This is about as heavy as a watch. This is like a pocket watch heavy. That is really, really nice. And of course, you've still got the wonderful felt doors and this upholstery on the bottom of the doors as well, which I think looks great. Another curious thing as well about this car is where the, the door release is located. It's located in the in the actual door pocket itself, this area. So you can literally, you literally get down here, hand in, and then push it open. Now let's see what she sounds like. that brings us to a close of this brief tour and overview of this wonderful VAS one of ten remaining of course with Tim's collection there's a lot of really nice touches like the lay care and the super cover stuff so if you have a car you'd like me to have a look at or you're interested in having a look at Tim's collection he is at crap car collective on Instagram I've been your your host I guess and thank you for watching keep watching and subscribe because I might get an SD one soon